Now, Libre version 27 gives us the path pattern option that allows us to move things like these bristles down a specific path. So let's talk about how we would make this brush from scratch and use the path pattern to do so. So I'm going to start off on the XY plane. And we'll make an arc. I'll make sure that these two points are horizontal with each other. We'll grab a vertical and make sure that the arc center is vertical with the origin. We'll grab a dimension and give this a distance of 40. And then we'll go with a distance of 25.4. I'll draw a line. We'll grab a coincident. And there we have a fully defined sketch. We'll deactivate the sketch now. I'll use this YZ plane. And we'll make a path. I'm going to use uh, two arcs. You certainly can use one arc if you prefer, but I like having two segments for my path pattern that we'll use later on. We'll give this a dimension of 125. We'll again make sure that these points are horizontal with each other. We'll also make sure that these points are equal, which they should be, yep, because we are going to be cocentric on both of those arcs. Uh, let's give this a distance. We'll go from endpoint to endpoint again. We'll go something like 95 and a quarter. And then I'll grab a vertical and constrain the arc centers to be vertical. We'll ignore this because we want to have an open sketch in this case. We'll go with sweep. Great, so sketch one is going along sketch two. I'll grab this, we use a center rectangle. We'll go with something like 130, 100, and then we'll add a horizontal constraint and we're fully constrained. We'll extrude cut. And there we have the top end of our brush. I'll select my XY plane again. Make a line straight up the center here. And then we'll go with an arc. I'll make another line coming back down. And then we'll end up where we started. So to dimension that, we'll go 0.75. And then from here to here, we'll say 0.2. Vertically from bottom to top, we'll go with 8. And then maybe I'll grab a coincident. We'll take this arc here and put it on the line vertical there. Then we want to choose from our origin to the bottom of this bristle. We'll go with a distance of 8. So we'll deactivate and revolve. And there we've made a good bristle. Um, excellent. Now the goal here would be to pattern this bristle in a way that looks like a very realistic brush. So we're going to select path pattern. And of course we need paths to pattern on. So let me generate those. We'll go on the XY plane. We'll say project a sketch. And I can choose this as a reference figure with maintained association. We'll go with an arc. Then we'll say equal. 
we'll deactivate the sketch and we'll ignore that it's open because we wish for it to be open. We'll make a path pattern and of course we choose our bristle. We choose our path object, which is sketch five. And then we can select how many that uh, we wish to have. I think I'm gonna go with eight in this case. We'll say okay. So we've got a series of bristles there. Now let's pattern that. I'll create a pattern on my YZ plane. And again, using the sketch that I've used before, we'll maintain association, deactivate sketch, ignore that it's open, and path pattern, we'll choose our bristle, and we'll choose the pattern, and then we can choose our path objects. We'll say okay on that. And actually, maybe I'll edit the uh, pattern a little bit. I think some more elements would make it look more realistic. So we'll go with something like 15. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's do a mirror. So we can mirror our patterns as well. We'll choose this as our mirror plane. And I'm missing that little row of bristles, so we'll be sure to add that as well. Then we can mirror that mirror. And we'll be sure to include this pattern as well. And that has given us a great pattern. So now we have to deal with some bodies that we don't want to, right? The, the nature of our pattern has given us a few things that we have to get rid of. So let's talk about uh, not just one, but multiple ways that you can deal with unwanted bodies here in Alibre. The first one that I think is quite useful is we'll come over here to remove model pieces. And with one click, I can simply remove the unwanted bodies. This is a probably a very heavy example of having a lot of bodies that you would want to get rid of. I think in many other cases, um, you wouldn't have that many bodies to delete. This is kind of a larger uh, example of bodies you'd wish to remove. Now, for some reason, uh, that is not a preferable solution. I can't think of a reason why it would be, but you know, if you run into something that that isn't a great way to do things, one other way to remove bodies is to use delete face. And I do roughly the same thing over here. We'll say OK on that. You'll see that we are left with surfaces. And we can come over to the surfaces after we've deleted the faces off of them. And I can use Control Shift to select the top uh, and bottom of my list of surfaces here. And we can hide them. And as far as the model is concerned, these are not solid, they're not visible, they won't export. These are um, simply removed bodies now. So that's another way of doing things. Now over here we can consider maybe an extrude cut or some other solution. But I'll simply uh, remove the excess bodies uh, with the uh, remove model pieces command. <clears throat> All right. So we talked about removing bodies, but if I try to remove these, which are slightly intersecting the body, I of course will remove all of the body or turn it into a surface if I try to delete face. But we have a great tool here, uh, remove face. And this will allow us to be able to remove elements of the part without having to worry about uh, deleting things that we don't want to. So for the very few bristles that we have that or intersecting in kind of a weird and awkward way, I can use remove face to get rid of these. So if we're happy with uh, the way that this brush has turned out so far, we can begin working on the body of the brush. I'll highlight my ZX plane, activate a sketch, and let's get started. I'll uh, highlight my outer part of the brush here, a little section there, and we'll uh, maintain association to source entity and we'll create a reference figure resetting my view yep I've got my border all the way around I'll simply offset and of course I can chain select if I want everything to be selected 
from our distance, we'll go with how about five millimeters in a flipped direction. Yeah, that's looking good. We'll go with a circular arc now. We'll make sure that we have a symmetry. Choose this as our line of symmetry and choose both of the arcs so that they both line up well. I also can do that with a tangent arc if I want to use my tangent relation manually a little bit less. Okay. We'll give this a dimension. Uh, we'll go from the origin to here. We'll say about 120. We'll give this a radius of 15. We'll give this a radius of about 80. In fact, uh, we could probably give it a radius of 85. Maybe we'll go 90. Yeah, that's great. And then, since this is geometry that I want to make sure I keep in the right place, I'm just adding a little lock uh, or an anchor constraint on all these. That's a good question. Where do we want these legs to end up? Of course, I would like this to end up tangent. Then they were fully constrained. So I'll grab my trim relation and we'll trim these sections out just like that. Uh, so I can deactivate the sketch. We'll give this an extrude and I'll go in the reverse direction Call this a depth of negative 10. Perhaps I'll want to put a hole in the handle in case the brush gets hung up or something like that. So sketching now, um, I'm going to simply select this segment, hold shift, select this segment and this segment. We'll project to sketch a reference figure with maintained association. Then we'll offset each of these three elements. I've got a distance of 9.6 millimeters and that seems like that's a good distance, right? So we have, we may start off with something like this and we'll just increase it until the arcs collide. In my case, 9.6 is a good size. Then I can delete, delete my arc segments and I may want to fully constrain this. centric right and then simply provide a distance on these 9.6 from there to there 9.6 from there to there I can use an equals and we're fully constrained so we'll deactivate we'll extrude just like that now I can give this fillets to give it a much more organic look perhaps five millimeters and five over here as well. We'll apply that. I'll select this edge down in here. Maybe I can go with something like two. And two probably isn't too bad for these faces either. So we'll close that. And uh, we can apply some fun colors to get out of the gray. I'll go with part color. Maybe we'll make this one kind of a desaturated blue. And then we can apply colors to faces. So something like that face can become black and maybe the uh, rods on our bristles can become black and uh, we have a comb. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the Libre channel and I'll see you in the next video.